Flying as a commercial remote pilot comes with a certain amount of restrictions. These restrictions are laid out in part 107, and I'm sure you've been studying them to pass your FAA exam. But what if you want to fly outside those regulations? Here at Gold Seal, we've been getting a lot of questions regarding waivers versus authorizations. They're very different things. If you want to fly outside the standard regulations, like fly higher than 400 feet or beyond visual line of sight or fly over a crowd of people, then you need something called a waiver. This waives you from the standard regulations you usually have to abide by. Now, if you want to fly in airspace in association with an airport, like class B, C, D, or E to the surface, then you have to apply for an authorization. You apply for an authorization or a waiver at the same portal at www.faa.gov UAS. And let me show you how to fill one of those out. Once you're on the website, click Request a Waiver or Airspace Authorization. From there, you can start to fill out your information. You've got your name, last name, organization, your home address, and you're also gonna need all of the information for the remote pilot that will be operating the controls, whether that be you or someone you've hired. This includes their airman certificate number, so make sure you have that on hand. You also wanna have the make and model and registration number given to you by the FAA after you've registered your unmanned aircraft. Next, you wanna look through the regulations and find the regulation that you'll be deviating from. In our case, we're talking about a night flight at the fairgrounds, so we're going to talk about the flight during daylight hours regulation. You want to put in the times. This could either be your local time zone, or you could put it in Zulu time or universal time. Next, you need to find the exact longitude and latitude coordinates of where you'll be flying. You can do it online at websites like latlong.com or Skyvector or ForeFlight. There's lots of resources out there, and we've got a more in-depth lesson on it at onlinegroundschool.com. Next, you'll need to look at a sectional chart. Determine the closest airport to your longitude and latitude coordinates, and then find out what airspace you'll be flying in. In this case, we'll be flying here. Looks like we'll be in class golf. We don't need an authorization, just a waiver so that we can fly at night. Next, we'll write a brief description on what it is we'll actually be doing for that flight. The FAA is going to use this information to determine whether we can make that flight safely and thus not cause any undue harm. To finish off, we'll mark the boxes yes or no depending on our situations, if we have a waiver or authorization pending, or if there's one in the works, depending on your scenario. Then we're going to do this crazy I'm not a robot thing where you match the pictures and decide which pictures have houses in them, all kinds of crazy stuff. And then we'll finally submit our waiver of request. And that's how it's done. Pretty quick and painless for a government website. Thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe for more great content. Good flying.